G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Uh, it's a pretty windy day here in, uh, in WA, very in Perth, and it's very drafty. And on that note, we're going to be talking about the 2022 <laughs> AFL draft. I haven't, uh, playing that segue, I uh, <laughs> haven't done any draft content yet, Drewzy, uh, but I thought who would be better to talk about some of the young WA prospects this year than the man who follows them closely on social media and, <laughs> as a side note, also did a bit of work with them last year, Drews. Not allowed to say that, but that's okay. Hello. <laughs> no, you can leave that in. Leave that's that in. Yeah. <laughs> I do not represent the AFL WA State Academy no longer, but I do know some of these players. Yes. Well, that makes one of us. Uh, today, we're talking about, uh, obviously, the best West Australian prospects in this year's draft. We will be doing more draft content as we get closer and closer to, uh, I think it's the last week of November, the actual draft, the two-day event. Far, frankly, it took far too long last year. Yes. Um, I think it was last year. I think every year it's taken too long. But anyway, I digress. Speed it up. So we're going to talk about uh, some of the best West Australian prospects. This seems like a relatively moderately talented WA group. I don't know what your thoughts are, Drews. Usually we have a prospect somewhere in the top 10. Uh, we might have two or potentially even three this year. Um, we're going to talk about some of the bigger names and also have a little peek at next year because there's a couple of prospects that I think are tantalizing. <laughs> Before we get into it, we did just record a Druzy yarn on your channel, Druzy. Still going strong? Yeah, real strong. Yeah. First episode in eight months. Football season's over. The podcast resume. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you've just finished uni, uh, so you're about to launch into some content. So if you haven't checked out Druzy's channel, uh, he hasn't been on the channel much this year. So if you haven't heard of him, um, he's a real good guy. Ah, thanks, buddy. <laughs> So uh, the, the format is, I think we've got about four prospects who are potentially all going to be in the first round. It could be even five by my math, mm -hmm. if you believe the rumours. Um, Those are rumours. Yeah, it is, it's still <laughs> very early in the, um, the draft rumour process. Things will change dramatically between now and late November. But we're going to talk about some of the biggest names. We'll start off with a guy that uh, I think you, you rate, and mm -hmm. I'll let you speak about him. Uh, talking about Jed Buzzlinger, the tall defender from East Perth. What are your, what's your knowledge around Jez Buzzlinger? Jez, Jez Buzzlinger. Jez Buzzlinger. <laughs> knowledge. Subscribe. Buzz Lightyear is a very good astronaut. Can't oh, it? <laughs> That's, That's badly not making it. What I've heard about Jed Buzzlinger is he is the top-rated key defender in this year's draft across the nation. Um... He's, he's not, like, explosively quick or anything like that, but um, a great intercept mark and very composed on the ball. Mm, yeah, he uh, stands at 196 centimetres. That could change. These draftees, they're getting taller and taller every year. Yes. Um, you know, what was a considered a sort of like a medium mid midfielder height back when, you know, I started following the draft 10 years ago. It's like a small forward now, and <laughs> you're getting midfielders now who are coming out at six foot four or six foot five, which we'll talk about. But Buzzling is a true uh, defender, and he is he's kind of like a rangy type from what I can gather. He's a bit more offensively oriented than, mm. than your typical sort of lockdown, sh uh, shutdown defender. Yeah. But um, he's a real attacking weapon off the halfback flank with uh, his intercept marking for a start and uh, the way he sort of directs play, like a bit of a general. So mm -hmm. um, he, and while he might not be the most defensively sound key back, I think uh, whichever club picks him will be uh, enamored by the fact that he can really pose a threat on the rebound, which is a very modern sort of way defences work. Where does he end up, I hear you ask, Drewzy? Well, <laughs> uh, at the moment, I think looking at the top 10, you've got North with two picks there, pick three and four. I think that's on the early end. They do need yeah. a key defender, but I think that's a bit early for Buzzlinger. Yeah. Uh, Gold Coast probably need a key defender, although there hasn't really been anything linking them to Buzzlinger specifically. Uh, West Coast naturally is going to be linked to every WA prospect because mm -hmm. they have two picks in the top 12. Don't really need a key defender, so it's another question mark, another possibility is Geelong at pick eight who probably are mm. on the market for. as if they have pick eight that oh, is yeah. ridiculous yeah. we've talked about a lot all this channel uh, on this channel rather um, that makes sense though I could see Buzzling going to Geelong yeah it, it yeah. would make sense but um, again nothing really concrete linking him but we can conclude that he's a likely top 10 pick probably pick five is probably the earliest you could see it going and I would be surprised mm. uh, but it'd be surprising if he got past both of West Coast picks uh, which were both in the top 12 Key defenders are, like, when they come at this, like, echelon of talent, like, they're going to get gobbled up early in the draft. Best key defender in the draft, Jed Buzzlinger. Yep, absolutely. We'll move on to uh, another West Australian talent. This guy, you said you don't have a huge awareness of because he's kind of shot to prominence this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about Ruben Jinbi, and I'm going to assume that it's Jinbi because I loosely know a guy called Jinbi and it's pronounced <laughs> that way. It could be Ginbi or Jean Bay, um, <laughs> if he's French. 
Uh, but this guy is a pretty interesting prospect. 189 centimetre midfielder, 85 kilos, real thick, solid prospect from Dunsborough, uh, which that part of the world has been producing a bit of talent mm. lately. Um, uh, what was it? Jai Jai Amos, um, Musselton, but same area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I meant the sort of southwest area. Um, but I mean, when you consider Bunbury doesn't really produce anything, and then mm. you've got Dunsborough and Bustle. Produces a lot of meth. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we do. I'm from Bunbury. I'm not. Yeah. He's played most of the year, I think, prior to the champs as a sort of running defender. Um, famously said on his uh, draft board, the way they fill out which player they play like, he put Jamie Crisp, <laughs> which doesn't exist, but I'm assuming he means Jack Crisp of Collingwood. Or Jamie Cripps. Yeah, but he doesn't play anything like Jamie Cripps, so uh, I'm going to assume it's not. But he's been thrown into the midfield this year. Um in the WA team, in the state champs, he actually won the WA MVP there you go. Um, as the best performed player for Western Australia, which is a huge honour, and he could well be the first West Australian picked. Um, his output, when you look at his waffle stats, doesn't really uh, stand out in terms of how many possessions he's getting a game, but I think this guy is like a real um, aggressively and uh, aggressive and athletic sort of prospect, so yeah, okay. high potential there. Peel Thunder? Uh, no, I believe he's East Perth, actually. Okay. Yeah, so uh, he's linked to East Perth in the same way that Amos was. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, while his waffle output was a bit questionable, there seems to be uh, a lot of talk that he is potentially a top five prospect. So the earliest we've seen him linked is uh, Gold Coast at pick five. We don't know if um, if that's accurate or not because yeah. uh, there's a lot of false rumors put around this time of year. Um, but other than that, West Coast has also been really strongly linked to him. So he looks like he could go in the top eight picks. Is there not more like, isn't the top 10 pretty much like all Victorians? Pretty much. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> I said oh, I guess we're going to talk yeah. about non-West Australians, are we? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'm kidding. Um, yes, so at the start of the year, it did appear that like South Australia made up about half of the top 15. Yeah. And then from the championships onwards, it's become extremely Victorian dominated. Yeah. Um, and I think it, probably the top five is considered, unless it's Jinby, um, all Victorian. And then you've got a couple of West Australian and South Australian talents yeah. like Filippo. For the Philippu, rather, and boy, does he. And, uh, <laughs> uh, fuck, I lost it. The next big West Australian talent uh, to emerge, and this guy's probably slid in calculations over the course of the year, Drew. Mm. I'm talking about Elijah Hewitt, a big bodied, explosive midfielder, sort of compared a little bit to Christian Petrarca in the way he plays. Obviously, that's a huge comparison. Petrarca's one of the best players in the game. Yeah. But in terms of the way he's uh, aggressive with and without the ball, very contested oriented, quick, yeah. dual sided, can be erratic with his ball use, but still um, you get a lot of value out of how aggressively he plays. What are your thoughts on Elijah Hewitt? You do know a little bit about this guy, don't yeah, you? Yeah, somewhat. I um, watched him closely in a lot of training drills and his composure. I love the word composure. <laughs> but he just sort of seems to like glide through areas of uh, contest contested ball stoppages and whatnot mm. like everyone's sort of like reactive to him because he's so damaging with the ball i never realized how important the skill of handballing was until i saw elijah hewitt how good he was with his hands mm. um and how good he is at getting into space after um giving off that first disposal as well what's it called like post contest disposal something like that you know what i'm uh, alluding yeah, to yeah yeah vaguely. yeah so like once he gets rid of the ball, he, he's not just like stuck in the stoppage. He's good yeah. at getting out as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Post clearance transitions. Yes, yeah, that sort of stuff. Whatever. But <laughs> <laughs> when you think of like Scott Pendlebury and like David Mundy, like the play sort of like goes at their pace when they have the ball. I think Elijah Hewitt's one of those. Yeah, that's cool. I, I think he. He slid in calculations this year, possibly due to the fact that he played league for Swan Districts on a half forward flank this year. Yeah. Um, and obviously playing at a completely different level and didn't stand out. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think at the start of the year, he was considered potentially top five. He could still go that way, but it's potentially sounding like he could slide out of the first round at the very worst case. So there's a big window where Hewitt can go. Yeah. Okay. Matt Johnson esque. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. I think he has a higher ceiling potentially than Matt Johnson. I would agree with that. I think uh, there's a lot more like exciting, potentially elite attributes at yeah. AFL level. Um, I, I, it's probably unlikely he slides out of the first round. We've heard some mixed reports. So some people are suggesting he could go as late as you know early 20s. Yeah. Uh, but then there's also another conflicting rumor that Essendon is interested at pick five. Yeah. So there may just be... It's considered a very even talent pool this year. There may be just very different rankings um, between different clubs, which would make sense. He'll go top 20, for yeah. sure. He had a standout performance for WA in the champs. Um, and I think he had 29 possessions and two goals. And I don't think they won the game, but it, was, nah, it would have been yeah. a match winner had, that, had they been able to get over the line. But uh, I think Elijah Hewitt will... Uh, five seems early for him. I'd be surprised again if he gets past West Coast two picks. I think he's the second best WA prospect. Yeah, in your opinion? Uh, behind who? Buzzlinger? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, a bit more proven in terms of production than a Jinbi, but 
What do I know? Then we'll talk about Darcy Jones, who is kind of a smaller midfielder. Like when, mm. when he's 175 centimetres and 67 kilos, you get pigeonholed a little bit into being a forward or a non-midfielder, which makes sense. But he seems like an undersized midfielder to me. He's described as thriving in the contest, using his speed and agility to get first hands. I'm just quoting uh, Rookie Me Central there for their information. Um, he's high production as well. He had 44 touches in round three Oof. in the Colts uh, for Swan Districts. Plays with a helmet. He's very <laughs> nippy, uh, exciting player. Um, as a West Coast fan, having lost um, you know, a nippy small midfielder in Willie Rioli, I feel yeah. like um, he's a player I'd like to add to our list. Played some league, played a bit of resis, uh, kicked a couple of bags or two for league. So nice. despite being a really small player, he's actually shown he can play against uh, some much bigger bodies. What are your thoughts on Darcy Jones? You've seen a bit of him? Yeah, well, another thing that uh, you didn't mention there was he did very well in the combine as well. So he broke the record for the agility test, beating Stephen Hill's record, which stood for, what, like 13 years or something? Yeah, more wow. than that, probably more than that. Yeah. Um, but also did very well in the vertical jump and the 20-meter sprint. So he's not only a great footballer, but a great athlete. Um, and like as you said, there's these midfielders that are coming out that are, they're not necessarily the big bodies. Willie Rioli, Sam Switkowski's those types. Um, can play on the wing as well. So he's quite versatile, athletic. Um, yeah, he'll, he'll go in this draft for sure. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of the rumour mill where he could go, typically guys of his size don't go early, but yeah. I feel like he could be a bit of a bolter this year. Other than the obvious WA connection to West Coast, because we have a lot of picks, that's why mm. I mentioned them on this video. But GWS has apparently put a lot of work into interviewing and they have four picks in the top 20. So to get Darcy Jones, unless they hope he slides to 31... Um, I think they have 18, 19, and 20, or maybe yeah. like 15, 18, and 19, or something like that. Um, there's a good chance that they pull the trigger on young Darcy Jones. Probably the fifth of the uh, of the guys who are potentially first-round prospects would be Ed Allen. And this one mm. um, is kind of linked to your club jersey, his father, Ben Allen, and ah. uh, named after, the, obviously, the Rocklanding Allen medal. Um, I did not know that. Didn't you? No. Yeah, Ed Allen is the son of Ben Allen, uh, who also played for Hawthorne, of course. He's really shot up the rankings lately. Yeah. He's 194 centimetres, um, and then he smashed the combine as well. I think he, he won the 20-metre sprint, okay. and I think he was like narrowly off breaking the record set by Joel Wilkinson yeah, back right. in, like, I don't know, 2010 or something like that. Maybe it was a bit after that. Um, but either way, we're seeing a six foot four, six foot five midfielder mm. who's also the, the quickest player in the cohort. Um, that's ridiculous. And mm. I think what's happened with him is he had no clear position before. Yeah. And now he's starting to find his groove as a genuine midfielder. Uh, I think he averaged over 25 disposals per game in the Colts this year, uh, nearly six marks a game, showing a bit of link up. Uh, and obviously with a big body like that, you could see him potentially playing inside, but also he's got the athletic profile to play outside as well. Have you seen much of Ed Allen or is he just kind no. of shot out of nowhere? Hey? Yeah, he, as you said, he sort of found his position in the midfield this year. When he was at the State Academy, from what I remember, he wasn't in the best 18, so he's definitely peaked this year. Or like, yeah, His profile has increased, his stocks have gone up this year um, because, yeah, he was sort of like a defender, like a key defender role last year. Um, but yeah, he's gone into the midfield, found plenty of the football and has emerged as an exciting prospect. He's grown a lot this year as well, as you were saying, these players do shoot up in these years. It's a really good sign to me that he can win playing the football, which is usually the biggest question mark on bigger guys who transition to the midfield. Uh, handballing skill, as you alluded to earlier, is one of them. And mm. the other ability is to find the football itself. And uh, that's no real question with Ed Allen. Um, where could he go? I've only really seen him linked to West Coast. Again, there's a there's a lot of linking of WA players to West Coast, hence them being mentioned a lot in this video. Could he be father-son for Frio? No, he fell four games short of qualifying Rats. for um, Fremantle. The threshold is 100 games. I think he played 96. Yeah, for um, So presumably he's a Fremantle fan, but West Coast, I don't think... I don't think Fremantle at pick 30 is going to have a shot to get Ad Allen. Apparently, West Coast is considering with one of their first two picks. So that's a top 12 selection, if true. If not... West Coast has still two more picks before Fremantle do. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we don't have a pick until late. Yeah. Rats. Yeah, it's really nice to be picking before you. <laughs> for once. Um, it is still stings that Geelong have a draft pick before us. Yeah, that's no cool. Shit. That's cool. We'll run through some of the lesser lights. Those guys are um, pretty much locks to get drafted, you'd think. Uh, and then there's some more speculative talents. I had Jed Hagen as a guy who may or may not get drafted, but you were saying before that you think this 175 centimetre midfielder <laughs> from his Fremantle you think he's a lock to get drafted. Yeah. Tell well, me about Jed Hagen. So he's always played up all throughout his football. So he was the captain of the under-15s as a 13-year-old. He played in the under-18s championship as a 16-year-old. The way he carries himself is very professional. Like, he's a very mature uh, player for his age. Like, 
already like he has his shoulders strapped and whatnot. I felt like he was like a 25 year old when I first met him, but he was a 16 year old playing in the under 18s. It's the hairline. <laughs> yeah. But um, I sort of saw him as a like a running halfback Caleb Daniel type. Maybe not as great of a kick. Mm-hmm. As Caleb Daniel, but he, he is a good kick and his um <laughs> his composure is very good. It actually is though, like his ability to distribute the ball under immense levels of pressure, especially kicking. Um yeah, he's very good. Um he has one of the best resumes for a WA player, um, in terms of accolades. He I think he was in the um all Australian squad potentially at some point, um in his yep, in his age. Was. Um so yeah, he has plenty of accolades. I think he'll go this year. Played in the uh, Australia under-18 side or, yeah, it was under-18 side at the start of the year where all the best prospects yeah. play against Collingwood's VFL men's side. So the fact that he made that showed that he was probably around the top 20 prospects, mm-hmm. they thought. The question mark on him is just size because he's another 175-centimetre metre <laughs> midfielder. Yeah. Uh, played half-forward for East Fremantle's league team. So, again, playing against yeah. some senior bodies. Uh, made the prelim and kicked two goals in that game as well. There so you, go. you feel like he's an AFL, a very draftable prospect. Yeah, if he's kicking two goals in the Waffle League and, and can play inside mid at his own age level as well as playing on halfback. Like, he's, he's versatile, which is what a lot of coaches like and very coachable with his maturity. Yes. We'll run through a couple of more uh, uh, lesser-known players. Caleb Smith, I think he's from East Fremantle, small defender, uh, really quick. I don't know a whole heap, but apparently West Coast put a lot of work. as a chance for pick 26. Uh, and the other one is Sam Gilby, 188 centimetres. Are you familiar with Sam Yeah, Gilby? silky yeah. left-footer, yeah. halfback or mid yeah. yeah, another AFL Academy prospect. Uh, had glandular fever this year and broke his leg. Right. So uh, didn't really have a lot of momentum this year, unfortunately. But is it still a good chance to get drafted because he has some AFL uh, quality uh, traits? Yeah, it could go late. Tell me about Jackson Broadbent, the 201 centimetre, 100 kilo ruckman. He was considered potentially yeah. top 10 at the start of the year. Uh, what have you made of Jackson Broadbent, who is still a chance to get drafted? This Big year? friendly giant, old Brody. He's just like... Such a great character. I suppose because he's just so tall, everyone just takes the piss out of him and he's learned to cop it. Um, but yeah, I just know Brody has been a great bloke. In terms of his football abilities, he's just a classic ruck. Like I, I don't really know which attributes for him really stand out. He got best on ground in the Colts grand final though. Um, so yeah, he's a big lump of a lad. Um, and yeah, he'll ruckman are pretty hard to come by and he'll probably slot into onto an afl list this year just graduated high school as well so shout out to broadbent <laughs> yeah uh, he slipped a little bit in rankings this year as i said at the start of the year considered first round talent potentially uh the theory is that he played through injury so uh, mm. we'll see i think being a ruckman he's always a chance to get picked up because they're yeah. a bit rarer um so i do think he's a late to rookie prospect but probably does get picked up there's a few clubs that need Rucks. Let's talk a little bit about next year. There are some more prospects. I can't cover them all. But um, there's Daniel Curtin. He yeah, was I was going to ask you about him. Yeah, best on ground in the Futures game as a uh, key forward mm-hmm. um, and potentially shaping as a top 10 for next year. I think he kicked uh, a couple of goals and had 20 possessions in that game. What do you yeah. know about Daniel Curtin? Uh, can play forward or back just as well. Um, I think he played in PSA football coming through as a forward and then in the state system played as a defender. And that's what, like... When you're trying to scout a kid to go onto an AFL list, it's that versatility. Like if someone's only played forward or whatnot, you're probably going to take someone that can play forward and back. Yeah. Um, and then can also rack up possessions as well. So he's added a lot of strings to his bow since I saw him last. Um, but yeah, very nice kid as well. That's good. We have another Ruckman uh, highly touted in Mitch Edwards next year as well. 205 centimetres. I think that's true. I couldn't actually find that confirmed. Uh, but either way, another good ruck prospect for next year. There's a kid I want to talk to you about because I know you know this kid personally. Mm. Uh, Colton Tholstrup. I turned on um, the footy to watch WA versus Allies yeah. and Tholstrup being an underager, so a reminder that it's for next year. He just looked like AFL, maybe yeah. not AFL ready, but like physically pretty ready to go and just had AFL traits. And yeah. it stood out to me even though he's an underager. Mm-hmm. 188 centimetres, explosive, good overhead, great kick, hits the scoreboard naturally as a forward. What yeah. do you make of Colton? Yeah, country boy from uh, Albany. That's the one. Oh, Esperance. Esperance ah, it is, yeah. um, which is how I know him um, because one of my mates is from Esperance and he knows Joe and ah, yeah, right. at the State that. Academy as well. But um, yeah, very aggressive uh, player. He's not scared to take the game on at all. He's just like a... You know those players that aren't in their own heads at all? Like, he just plays football and doesn't overcomplicate it. Mm. Um, and, yeah, he's very explosive. Shot up in height this year as well. Just a fearless player. The sort of player that you want to have in your team. Um, to, yeah. 
I think it, going. I think in early days he was leading the Colts goal kicking award because uh, um, as an underager, so yeah. I think he kicked a couple of bags of five or at least one bag of five, mm-hmm. uh, which is good as an underager, pretty physically ready to go. Kind of gave me a little bit of Dugowie vibes, but I've only okay. seen him play once, so I don't know if that's accurate. Um, but at 188 centimetres, we're talking about a kid that could easily be key position height next year. So um, it'd be interesting to see where he lands. Yeah. And I think he could be first round next year. Early I think he can play on the wing as well a fair bit. Yeah, yeah. So. He, he sort of seems versatile, can yeah. play out the ground as well. But if you get, you know, 195 centimetres, let's say, he could easily grow seven centimetres in a year. Yeah, I think he could be an early round <laughs> prospect next year. <laughs> so that wraps up uh, all the kids we wanted to talk about, the main prospects from WA as well as an early look to next year. Uh, there is a page on Instagram. Uh, is it called WA Footy Prospects? Yeah, let me, shout out. Let me confirm that. If you want some really good info, it's an Instagram page called WA Footy Prospects. I'll put it in the description of this video uh, and you can chuck it a follow because they give you um, some really good information about the West Australian prospects. This channel is not only going to be about the WA boys. Uh, we just thought it would make this one WA focused. We're going to make more draft content as the uh, as the off season progresses because I mm. find this stuff really fun and naturally my club is in the depths of despair <laughs> and rebuilding. So I've take an extra interest in it as well. <laughs> Druzy, thank you for your time. Thank you for your expertise. Make sure you check out his channel um, for the Druzy yarn, for which I was a part loosely. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, Gapingly. guys. Bye. <laughs> what did you say? Gapingly. Gapingly. <laughs>